And my first initial thoughts upon viewing this video was disbelief, frustration, disappointment, and anger. Anger that a teacher at Intercom High School, and, I, and I'm going to quote what he said openly, I have 180 days to make revolutionaries. And his response, he, and, they, and they asked him, how do you do that? And his response was, I scared the F out of him. As a parent, this is alarming. Alarming that the school staff, principal, vice principal, other teachers and the faculty did nothing and allowed this indoctrination of these ideologies and beliefs to cultivate in his classroom. They did nothing. According to your statement that you guys released yesterday, that whenever civic education includes topics that may be controversial due to political beliefs or influences, instruction shall be presented in a balanced manner that does not promote any particular viewpoint. Are you going to sit here and tell me that Mr. Gibbs and the way he presented the material and subject matter is balanced and not promoting a specific viewpoint? Where is the American flag in his classroom? Where is the Constitution or literature of the Declaration of Independence hanging up in his classroom? Nowhere. Is it not the responsibility of the district to evaluate the teachers? Let me answer that for you. Yes, it is. According to your governing board, the expect administrators assigned to evaluate teachers shall be competent in the instructional methodologies used by the teachers they evaluate. Be skilled in the supervision of instruction and the techniques and procedures related to the evalu evaluation of the instruction. It is your responsibility to know what he's teaching. Absolutely. And it's been going on for years. Yeah. And you allowed it to happen. That tells me that you're not even following your own governing board, your own rules. You're responsible for that. Yep. Why? Why allow this to go on? All right, you're, um, the school right. district has failed, in my opinion, Can and I'm going to finish with this last thought. All right. Because you've allowed this indoctrination of Mr. Guy and his political ideology to flourish in his classroom. You have an opportunity to correct this. Everything has been brought to light. And, it, and like everyone is saying, it, has, it does not end with Mr. Guy. There are some deep-rooted issues right, within so this district. You please to, um, and I hope you guys speaker. make the right choice and make a change with yeah. this. <laughs> I talked to my daughter, and she, the guy seems very nice, whatever. The first thing that he said to them, to the students at the beginning, the same thing that he said on the video, I have 180 days to turn you guys into revolutionaries. That's how he started the year, okay? Now they asked him, well, you know, what's going on? He said, I can't tell you anymore. He said, I don't know you guys yet. So from the very beginning, he planted the seed. Wow. And this guy is in a position of power. And part of me feels bad for the guy. You know, he went to Sac State, he's a local guy. But you know, you guys have to educate, not indoctrinate. It, it, it's, yeah. part of me is, feels hopeless almost. Um, that is, you know, he's right. We keep moving to the left, 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 left. They're now putting, <laughs> Posters of Mao. I, mean, I could just go on and on, but I don't want to vent. Um, thank you guys for taking action. Uh, I'm gonna hope that you guys are doing it because it's the right thing, um, and not because you're being forced to do it. Um, once again. I don't want to know your political ideology. I don't care. I don't want radical left, radical right. I don't want that in the classrooms. I can't believe that we got into that point where a teacher is actually bold enough, a Marxist, an Antifa terrorist. I mean, yeah. it's just, All right. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, guys. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. This is my son. He graduated this year. OK. He went, he went through hell last year, and you put all of us on the front line last year. We got to see everything that was going on. You have the, the men in blue here to protect you guys. They should be knocking on that door, arresting that man. I have nothing but respect for these men in blue as much as all these people do. 
If it weren't for these people, he'd probably be dead. Because people like this lifted him up. Do you guys know how much teenage suicide happened last year? That's what we should really be talking about. That's on you guys. All of it. I want to ask for your resignation. You guys don't deserve this job. There's many people in this in this room that can do your job a thousand times better. I promise you, I'm one of them. Because I care about children. I don't think you guys do. Or you wouldn't let this kind of stuff happen. This is ridiculous. I got this video this morning, and let me tell you, I'm not shocked. Why? Because there's another teacher right down the road at Leroy Green Academy who did the same thing to my son and to many others. And you people know who it is. I'm not even going to mention the name. Because thank God for these people. Because I'm going to go talk to them and they're going to do another video. Because you're going to see another video as soon as they get to talk to me. I promise you that. You already know his name. I don't even got to mention it. I'm appalled that that man is still teaching at my daughter's school. I cannot believe it. My daughter is taking AP World History. She's so uncomfortable with taking the class. You know why she's taking that class? Because I wouldn't let her be in this other person's class. That's on you. Good evening, board. My name is Christine Bish. I'm a candidate for Congress in this area. I'm here to speak on behalf of the number of teachers that contacted my campaign because they're afraid. They're afraid to speak out that you won't defend them against the teachers union. That will have them railroaded out of their jobs, out of their careers, which will ultimately railroad them out of their homes. The majority of teachers, I believe, are good. They have a passion, went through everything it took to get through school, to get the teaching credential, and want to be in a beautiful school district. This should be the flagship for Sacramento, one of our most technologically advanced high schools. And we have students afraid to go here. I know of one board member here who has consistently fought for the students and for the teachers, the teachers that are afraid to stand here and say this. I'd appreciate it if you didn't play with your phone while I was speaking. You need to look at me. I'm paying you the courtesy of standing here speaking to you, so looking away. Now we know what happened. We know what happened when the children came to the school board, to the principal, to their counselors, and begged for help because they were being tortured and indoctrinated by a teacher. Because you turned your head away. You decided to play with your phone. You're going to see plenty of your face on social media when these people leave here. There may be lawsuits, but what I can tell you is I've had multiple teachers tell me they have complained. They've had students complain. They've had parents complain. We need a full and thorough criminal investigation from the bottom up, from the janitors all the way up to the superintendent to find out who is ignored. And to the one person I know on this board that has consistently fought for the rights of the students and to take care of the teachers here, thank you. Thank you. First year at this high school that is world renowned and everybody knows about this school, it's so perfect and everybody does everything right. The first time my daughter tells me and she goes against my wishes to come out of a classroom that's disruptive to her well-being, I have an issue. Yes. Yes. I am very articulate. My children are very well read. They, are, they speak their opinion. They make sure that they are clear in what they do and do not like. And for the fact that my 17-year-old daughter had to come to me and said, Mom, you don't understand. He's, he's, let me explain. 
This means that in two weeks, in 13 days, he was allowed to change my daughter's mind about some fascist crap that y'all have led in this school. I'm tired. This is ridiculous. I'm from Texas. So this don't go on in Texas. This does not go on in Texas. There are two grades higher than California, period. So to think that my very sound-minded daughter would go against me and my wishes and our values in our home to be able to go and support this man and he is putting her in harm's way, what the hell are y'all doing? Yeah. I'm tired. How long does it have to go on before somebody says something? Yes. How long? How long? What are you going to do? That's the question. Get him out of here. Hello, my name is Wendy, and um, as a former teacher, I know that we're not allowed to share our political views, and the students shouldn't know what we believe no matter what we're teaching. We're to teach the content and teach it professionally. Obviously, Gabriel did not do that, and we've heard lots of complaints about that tonight. But my um, concern is with the Facebook page that says Natomas Unified School Forum, and we have a board member, Lisa Kaplan, who is an admin for that board member, yes. for that um, Facebook page. And today, when a parent asked to see the video, I posted the video from Project Veritas, the Facebook link, and her response was, this is inappropriate for this forum and will be deleted. Phil She says, this is inappropriate for this forum and it will be deleted. Feel free to Google on your own. It's an Atomus Unified School Forum page that's public. And my response to that was, why are we censoring this? It's inappropriate what the teacher did. So you're censoring the parents from knowing what happened and you have no problem with that, but you didn't censor the teacher. So he had it blatantly on his walls. So why are you censoring parents and not the teacher. Why is what we want to see inappropriate? His own words, why are his own words inappropriate? Because he's been caught, but what he's doing is not inappropriate. You should be ashamed. Way to call her out. I do have a question in regards to curriculum. Last year, it was very difficult. I know the previous year, I was so excited. The school district bought new curriculum books. We got to go and pick and browse and see which ones and voted on them. So last year, he got all of his workbooks, his books, brought them home. Not one teacher used those books. They had their own curriculum. Where is that from? Is it approved by you? Do you know what each of those classes are teaching? You don't. Because in his history class this year that he had for a week, they took identity tests. They took personality quizzes. A 14-year-old taking a personality quiz in a history class. For what? Exactly how does that relate to history is the question. And that was his question. My husband, who's a psychology data analytics person, said you will not do this homework. We sent an email to the teacher saying, this is inappropriate, give him a history assignment. She did, somewhat. Then the next day, same thing. But this time, he emailed his counselor saying, I think I need to be moved from the class. Then he was called up by the teacher, and she said, I think you need to be moved out of this class. So, I don't think that's fair for him. He didn't do anything wrong. She did. And she was uncomfortable, I think, with that fact and the fact that we were pushing back. Time? It's time? Okay, so my, I have just one, one more minute. Why, why, even today, they have yet to crack the books? Why did we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on curriculum when they're not using it? That's my question I want to know. And if you know what the curriculum is. Because it's all worksheets and not books, including math.
All right, Madam Chair, I'm going to motion for another recess. Second. Second the motion. Is there prior unanimous roll call without objection? Georgia!